Hia enters the house and notices the door to Konami's room open and enters while she is changing. He then teases her and she yells at him to get out of the room. Later, the two are in the dining room and Konami tells him that he can't walk into any girl's room like that. And he says that he has always been entering rooms if the door is not locked. And she slaps his face, telling him to stop acting like an invader. He later tells her to keep herself safe after watching the news about increasing earthquakes, saying that he has also heard of some suspicious people around the area. She asks him if he really cares about her, and he says that he does because his childhood friend has become a hot girl now and she says they are like siblings. They are later walking to school when they see a girl coming from the opposite side, and Konami admires her beauty. As the girl passes by the two, she whispers to Yuya to be careful, and if he isn't she will make him pay for it. Later at school, Yuya falls asleep during the afternoon classes and tells Konami that he stayed up all night reading his mother's latest book, and she tells him to let her borrow it later. Yuya is at home study and decides to take a bath and goes to check on Konami first, and notices some movements down in the street. Suddenly, a magical portal appears on the floor and a girl appears. She announces that she has made it safely to Earth with the help of the special gifts, the royal scepter and crown. She then jumps on Yuya, saying that she has found the great hero, before introducing herself as Angelia Ido Grancha and telling him that he will be reincarnated as the strongest of heroes in another world. Yuya is confused and asks her if he can take a bath, and she tells him that she can wait. Later, she walks into the bathroom draped in a towel and helps Yuya wash his back. Yuya then demands her to explain what is going on, and she tells him that she is from a different world called Fachalia and her planet is home to many people from his world. She then tells him about the war on her planet with the Demon Lord's forces, and that they can defeat all the evil forces and magic of the Demon Lord with the help of the legendary hero, Yu. and she dances in glee which makes her towel fall off. Yu then asks her to sleep in the guest room and give him some time to think. Later, he thinks about what Angelia told him, thinking that it sounds like something his mom would write in her novels, thinking that she might have sent a girl to prank him. But Angelia appears suddenly, telling him that it is not a prank, and that she can sneak to anywhere by using her shadow walk skill. She then tells him that she is very useful, showing him her skills and also telling him that all the fantasy stories on Earth are modeled after Fachalia, later falling asleep in his bed. He then sleeps while wondering what kind of place Fachalia would be, later dreaming about fighting demons and protecting Angelia. The next morning, Konami decides to wake Yuya, and freaks out when she sees Angelia in his bed. Angelia then wakes up and Yuya tells her that he will help her if he can, and she happily embraces him. Just then, Konami comes back thinking that she might be seeing things as Yuya has never even laid hands on her, but freaks out again after seeing Angelia all up on him. Yuya then tells Angelia that he will talk to her about this after school. After school, Yuya explains to Konami about what happened, and she refuses to believe him. Just then, he sees a small man wearing a hooded cape, and he runs after him, later running into the girl he saw the day before. He is then about to be hit by a truck when the man pushes him out of the way to save him, and gets killed by the truck. Angelia then comes out of the truck, and tells Yuya that he has to die first to be reincarnated into a great hero. But the girl stops her, introducing herself as Lucille von Darkbury, the daughter of the Demon Lord, and says that she has to protect the hero safe. But Angelia says that she won't rest until she has killed the hero herself. The two girls engage in a fight. Lucille tries to use her demonic skills to attack Angelia, but Angelia uses her resistance spell and dodges her attacks. Konami runs over to Yuya and asks if he is okay, and he decides to leave with her, but a huge monster appears in front of Yuya. Lucille then tells Angelia that she cannot fight off multiple powerful enemies alone even if her level is higher than her, and Angelia realizes that Lucille has called upon her allies. She then decides to retreat and teleports. The golem tells Yuya that he has nothing to fear, and Lucille tells him that they are not his enemies. Yuya suddenly feels something in his chest and passes out, later waking up in an unknown room. He wonders where he is and opens one of the drawers, finding women's undergarments in it. Just then, Lucille comes in and freaks out, and angrily asks him what he is doing, and he says that he just has to open a dresser when he sees it. Lucille then realizes that the great hero is said to enter homes uninvited, rummage through drawers and closets, and break pots. Yuya asks Lucille where he is, and she tells him that they are in her home base, which is an old renovated mansion outside of the town, and they were sent there from Fachalia's dark realm so that Yuya doesn't die. He then asks her about Konami, and she tells him that she is safe. Meanwhile, Konami is in a huge bath that is full of water and rose petals. Suddenly, another woman enters the bath and asks her if she is enjoying the bath. She then introduces herself as Lamia Ace, and asks Konami if she is in the party of the great hero, or his lover, but Konami angrily tells her that he is just her neighbor. She then asks Lamia what is going on and what will happen to Yuya, and Lamia tells her that Yuya has the capability of being reincarnated, and if someone with that capability dies here on Earth, 
he is reincarnated into their world, Fachalia, as one of the strongest heroes. Konami gets furious after hearing that Yua is to be reincarnated in their world after he dies, and tells Lamia that Yua is her precious childhood friend, but Lamia realizes that Konami has feelings for him. Meanwhile, Yua thanks Lucille for her chit-chat, and she tells him that she is not trying to be nice to him and is only keeping him safe and hidden so he doesn't die. Konami leaves after the bath and wonders about the situation, thinking that nothing is making any sense. She then sees Yua and Lucille coming her way and gets excited to see him, and he asks her if she was in the bath, teasing her by saying that he wasn't there. He then sniffs her and says that she smells like roses, and Lucille asks if they usually bathe together, making Konami angry. Lucille then takes the two to her friends, telling them that they are all boss-class creatures and fighters. As they enter, all the creatures greet Yu, and Lucille announces that the Princess of Gracia has come to Earth to kill Yu in order to make a new hero. But they will not let it happen, and tells Yu that she and the ace-level monsters selected from the twelve tribes will block the creation of a new hero and keep him safe. Meanwhile, Angelia gets her forces ready, determined to save Yuya from the demons. The next day, Yuya and Konami are walking to school when Konami says that they should not be going to school, but Yuya says that Lucille has allowed them to go. A flashback reveals that Lucille told Yuya and Konami that she wants them to continue going to school, and Yuya asks her why she wants so as it is not safe for them because Angelia is after his life. Lucille says that it is not 100% safe but it will not be right for her to interfere with his and Konami's life because of issues they brought along from their world. And Dragon Ace, one of Lucille's monsters, tells Yuya that they can go and live their lives normally as they will always protect and defend him and Konami. Konami appreciates Dragon Ace's kindness, and Skeleton Ace says that it is what Goblin Ace would want. Skeleton Ace tells Yuya that all of the monsters are ready to sacrifice their lives for the sake of their princess and a great hero, and Lucille tells him that his life is in their hands and they will not let it go to waste. Yuya and Konami reach school and find Yoshino Sakurami, who is the prettiest girl in their school, looking at something in the bushes, and Yuya sees a weird exclamation mark on her head. Konami greets her, and the mark disappears, making Yuya think that he was imagining. Yuya then asks her if something is wrong, and she says that she lost her harmonica after she played it outside. But Yuya notices a light twinkling behind her, he then checks and finds Yoshino's silver harmonica, and gives it to her, and she asks him how he found it so fast. Yoshino then thanks him and smiles, and Konami tells her that the harmonica is very pretty. Later, Konami asks Yua how he knew that Yoshino needed help, and he tells her that he saw a mark on her head. Suddenly, Lucille appears, and tells him that the mark he saw was a quest mark, and he is really the hero. Konami and Yua are shocked to see Lucille dressed in the school's uniform, while all the other students greet her. Yuya then asks her how everyone knows her, and she tells him that she used a ground-level demonic magic spell called Mimic, which can give her a camouflage of any sort and no one will think she is out of place, also telling them that Harpy Ace is watching over them from the skies, while Slime Ace is in the school grounds. Lucille's camouflage, however, doesn't stop the other students from staring at her, and she asks Yuya if she looks out of place, and he tells her that she is a hottie which is why everyone is staring. Yuya then walks away with Lucille, leaving Konami behind, and her friend Kacho comes to her, saying that Yuya is going to be taken away from her. Later, the teacher named Kazuma announces that there is a new student in the class, and Angelia walks in, introducing herself to the class, which makes Lucille mad. The teacher makes a student switch seats with Angelia after realizing that she knows Yuya. Angelia later tells the other students that she is from Gracia and Yuya is her precious great hero. Later, Lucille tells Yuya and Konami that Angelia has used a spell called Charisma, which is a princess class skill and everyone without magic resistance abilities are forced to follow her lead. Just then Angelia finds Yuya standing in a corner and is about to shoot him, when Kacho comes and asks her if she can call her Leah, interrupting her mission. Yuya later tells Angelia that his death will make so many people sad, and she promises to not kill him for some time. After school, Lucille, Konami, and Yuya are walking home when they are stopped by a group of men who are being mind-controlled by Angelia, and they try to attack. However, Yuya feels his body feeling light and manages to defeat all the men, and Angelia says that his hero side has awakened. She then comes forth with her royal sword, ready to kill and reincarnate Yuya, but Lucille tries to stop her. However, Angelia creates an illusion mirror to trick Lucille and punctures Yuya with her sword, killing him. As blood gushes out of his mouth and body, she tells him to come to Fachalia, while Konami and Lucille watch in horror. Angelia is happy that the great hero will now join her in Fachalia, and decides to fight and kill Lucille, while Konami is crying for Yuya, whose lifeless body is in Angelia's hands. She lays Yuya's body down and takes out a rifle, and shoots at Lucille. Lucille tries to protect herself with her magic, but fails to completely block it. 
She ascends to the sky, but Angelia throws a grenade at her that blasts in her hands. Lucille realizes that she cannot win against Angelia alone and needs assistance. Suddenly, a small one appears over Yuya's wound, and Konami calls out his name. Angelia looks back at Yuya, saying that she had pierced his jugular vein, unable to understand what is happening. Lucille then tells her that since Yuya's awakening as a hero had already started, he did not die and only got knocked out of battle, which is the state of near death that only the great hero and his party is granted, and as long as the light on his heart is glowing. An advanced resurrection magic or a legend class item can be used to revive Yua. Konami cries while asking Lucille if she can bring Yua back and help him, but Lucille says that she doesn't have that kind of magic. Angelia then says that she will kill the great hero for good, but Lucille stops her, and Angelia decides to retreat, saying that he will die anyway if not resurrected on time. And Lucille realizes that if a hero is left knocked out for too long, he dies. Just then, Lamia Ace calls Lucille and asks her about the explosions near Yu's residence. Lucille tells her that the hero has been defeated and she was with him the whole time. But Lamia says that they can do something to save him and there is no time to give up. And Lucille realizes that there is a way he can be saved. She then turns to Konami and asks her if she wants to save Yuya at the cost of taking her own soul and Konami nods. Angelia then says that she will not allow whatever they are planning and comes forth to attack. But Lucille tosses her necklace to Konami before engaging in a fight with Angelia. Angelia says that the hero has to die, but Lucille tells her this won't happen and that the demons have gathered dark magic to fight against humans and defeat them. And Angelia says that they have done the same as humans. Meanwhile, Konami stares at the necklace, confused about what she should do and how she can use it to save Yua. She then holds it between her hands and cries, saying that she doesn't want Yua to die, pleading that he comes back for her. Suddenly, she sees two options appear in front of her, one of which says the Dark Priest, and the other says the Chaos Grapper. Lucille then tells her that she has to select the Dark Priest, and Konami does as told. Just as she selects the option, she ascends to the sky and begins to transform. Angelia then says that she will have to take Konami down too and tries to attack Konami, but she is backed off by forbidden magic and Konami has already transformed. Konami reappears as the Dark Priest, and Kacho and Seno watch everything from a building's top in the distance. Konami then opens her eyes and feels strong power flowing in her body, and realizes that she can use the power to save Yuya by reviving him. She uses her skill called Dark Resurrection to wake Yuya, and Yuya wakes up, coughing out the blood in his mouth. Lucille and Konami are happy that he is alive, but Angelia comes forth with her sword to attack Yuya again and Lucille tries to stop her. However, Angelia is stopped by Yuya himself, who suddenly stands up and holds Angelia's sword attack, and she watches him in shock. She then realizes that Konami, Lucille, and Yuya have become a fully formed party, regretting that she is not a part of it, and retreats for the time being after bidding farewell to Yuya. The battle ends and Yuya collapses on Konami just before her armor's time expires, and she is left naked. Lucille then tries to find clothes for her, telling Yuya to look away. Meanwhile, Kacho and Seno watch the battle from a distance, standing on a building's roof. Kacho then tells Seno that things have started to get fun in this world as well, but Seno says that she has a strange feeling. Konami sobs in happiness, saying that she is glad to have Yuya alive again, and he asks her what does she mean by alive, and Konami hugs him. Lucille then tells her to stop as what she is doing is not right and should control her feelings, while Yuya wonders if he was really that close to dying, realizing that he felt like he has no self-will and he is some kind of machine, and shivers, thinking about what Angelia really meant by the great hero stuff. Just then, Konami collapses, losing her consciousness, and Lucille tells Yuya that she is suffering from the after-effects of sudden class change and dark resurrection casting, saying that she has to take her back to her manor immediately and asks Yuya to bring some clothes for Konami. Meanwhile, Angelia is flying around, thinking about another presence that she felt during the battle, and follows her senses to locate who else was there. She finds Seno hiding on a tree in a park. Seno tells herself that the princess is cheat-level dangerous and along with her royal treasures, she has many abilities to support herself. Angelia then tells Seno that she is recording her, and Seno asks her if she knew that she was being tracked by her, and Angelia tells her that she found out with the help of her royal treasure, the Maya Crown. Angelia then asks Seno who she is, as she had noticed her keeping an eye on her at school, demanding her to answer her, and Seno refuses, saying that she is from a class that Angelia can never attain. But Angelia tells her that a princess can attain any class she wants, and then attacks Seno, later realizing that she is a ninja, which is one of the two classes that are sealed away in the Forbidden Land, and she becomes furious that Seno is distracting her from her real mission. Kacho then tells Seno to retreat as the princess, sounds furious, and Seno does as told, while Angelia comes forth to strike her down with her royal sword. 
Angelia attacks Seno and cuts her body in half, but Seno uses her ninja skill called Temporal Jutsu, and her body comes back together. Seno then leaves after telling Angelia to see her at school. Meanwhile, Konami is in bed, unconscious, while Lamia, Yuya, Lucille, and Lamia Ace stand beside her. Yuya asks Lucille what happened to Konami, and she tells him that they had to transform Konami into a dark priest in order to keep him alive, and he asks her why Konami is unconscious. Lucille is hesitant to tell him, and Lamia comes forth to help, and tells Yuya that the demon-engineered class change and the dark resurrection took a lot of Konami's life force, and Yuya freaks out, asking if she is in danger. Lamia then explains that Dark Resurrection sacrifices the body of the user and creates a knocked out ally. And if she uses the Resurrection spell many times, she can also die. Yua gets furious and angrily asks Lucille why. Konami did something this dangerous and she tells him that it was to keep him from becoming a hero. And he realizes that Konami sacrificed herself for keeping him from turning into a hero. Lucille then apologizes to Yu, saying that all this has nothing to do with him and Konami, but they still got involved, bowing her head down, but Yu tells her to stand back up and apologizes for yelling at her. Lamia then tells Yu that she has something important to discuss with him, about his sudden awakening during the battle, asking him if he is ready to talk about it, and he says that he is. Later, the girls take him to the bath, all dressed in swimsuits, and tell him that the water in the bath has healing powers, which will heal all his wounds. Yu then asks Lamia what the awakening and she tells him that he defeated the group of men who were charmed by Angelia. He then realizes that all of them have some skills, and Lamia tells him that he used the skills to defeat the gang, later reminding him of the Goblin Ace, who saved Yua from being killed by Angelia and got killed in the process, and tells him that his powers might have been transferred to him. Harpy then comes out of the water and leaves the bath. Yua then tells Lamia that he had dreamed about Goblin Ace fighting when he first passed out. And Lamia says that this proof of his power is transferring to him, but he says that Angelia had killed Goblin Ace and not him. Lucille then tells him that Angelia made him join her party and now whomever she defeats, their powers will be transferred to him. Later, Yuya asks Lucille about the exclamation marks he sees, and she tells him that those are quest marks which can help him gain X. And he asks her if the X can help him defend himself against Angelia but she says that she is too strong. And Lamia says that even boss class monsters like themselves had it tough because of her heroic royal blood. And Yuya has to become as strong as the great hero to fight her. Just then, Skeleton Ace comes and tells Yuya that Konami has woken up. And he runs to see her. He then promises her that he will become strong enough to protect her and defeat Angelia. Later, Lucille begins his hero training with Golem Ace. He trains with Golem Ace in the Lost Holy Land of Krishus, while Lucille and the others watch him. Golem Ace keeps on blocking Yuya's attacks, and he gets confused. Cyclops Ace then tells him that the long sword he made will not break and he should keep attacking Golem Ace, and Yuya says he will do his best. Gargoyle Ace then tells him to have a closer look at Golem Ace's body, and he notices that some things are lighting up. And as he focuses more, the color of his eyes changes, and Lucille is happy to see that he has the heroic skill called Detect Weakness. Yuya finally sees Golem Ace's weak points, and he charges at him to attack, and manages to strike him. Golem Ace gets furious and is about to attack Yuya back, when Lucille orders to stop the training, and Yuya suddenly collapses. Yuya later wakes up and finds his head placed on Lucille's lap, and he teases her by saying that resting on her lap is the greatest thing ever, and she yells at him. She then stands up and tells him that he was one step away from being knocked out by Golem Ace, saying that he should take a break. Later, Golem Ace apologizes to Yuya, saying that he was not attacked and damaged like that in a long time, and it was hard to control himself from a counter-attack, and Yuya tells him that it's fine as he is okay. He then asks them where they are, as the place does not look like Japan, and Golem Ace tells him that they are in an alternate dimension that the boss class monsters have, called the Dungeon. He tells him that dungeons are magically separate from the outside world, and so they can train in them without Angelia finding them. Cyclops Ace then appreciates Yuya, saying that he has a good arm on him, and Yuya says he feels as if the sword was designed for his hand as it is so light and goes right where he aims. Lucille then tells Yuya that usually he would have required years of training and mock battles in order to attain swordsman class and boost his skill level, and says that he is generally under their protection, telling him to keep himself from dying while handing him a drink. She then serves him some food, saying that heroes possess great skills and powers, but she and her comrades are still stronger than him for now, but he interrupts her, saying that he thinks she'll be a great wife, and Cyclops Ace laughs, telling him to marry her then, making Lucille furious, and she says that this is no fairy tale where the hero marries the demon lord's daughter. They then glance over at Gargoyle Ace sitting in Golem Ace's lap, and Lucille says that the two are officially a couple. Suddenly, Lucille attacks you unannounced, and he tries to see her weakness using his ability. 
but instead starts to admire her beauty and tells her that she is beautiful just before charging at her. Lucille's auto counter ability is activated, and she tells Yuya to run as she loses control of her body, but he uses his auto guard ability to defend himself, shocking Lucille. The two fall down over each other, and she asks him if he read her movements, and he says that he learned it from her. Yuya then asks her if all this is okay as he wants to get along with her, but as a great hero, he will become her enemy. And she says that she expects a lot from her and knows that if he stays the way he is he will not turn into a murderous hero, telling him that if he can keep his human heart and also level up his skills, his feelings will remain in place. The two are then interrupted by Cyclops Ace, who stares at them, and she yells at Yuya that he has to level up his exp and heal his burns. Later Gargoyle Ace teaches Yuya how he can transfer his ability chart from his brain to his senses. Yuya then sees his stats, and he is shocked to see his stats are higher than expected. Lucille then tells him that the most important stat is defense, and boosting it will make him withstand more challenging training. The next morning, Lucille and Angelia see each other at the school's gate, while Konami hides behind Lucille. Angelia asks Lucille if Yuya is absent, saying that she cannot find him even with her party locator skill and asks if he is in someone's dungeon. She later discovers that Yuya has messed up his stats by increasing his magic stats, and so he won't be coming to school for some time, and laughs at how silly it is. Just then, Kacho and Seno come to the three, and Kacho proposes that they cut school for the day, later taking them to the spa resort. Kacho asks the girls if they know the truth about this world, and Lucille asks how she knows about it, and Kacho reveals that her class is Sage. Angelia mentions that Sage is a forbidden class, and was deemed by her family as too strong to exist. Konami is confused and asks what is going on, and Yuya tells her that she doesn't have to worry about it. Angelia then asks Kacho if she and her kind are after their ancestors, bearing her weapon at her, and Seno comes forth to defend Kacho, but she stops her, saying that she wants to be friends with Lucille and Angelia. However, Angelia uses her skill called Eyes of Truth and tells Kacho that she is lying. Kacho then asks her if she knew that the princess was granted by the sage. Angelia then asks her if she is trying to seek revenge against the royalty who banished her. And Lucille asks if she is seeking to kill the demon lord along with the great hero again. But Kacho says that she wants to be friends with them only, and her ultimate goal is a secret. She then tells them to quit the talk and enjoy the day together before jumping into the pool. Konami then asks Kacho what she meant by truth about the world. And she tells her that Earth and Fachalia used to be the same, one world, shocking everyone. Meanwhile, Yuga continues to train with Golem Ace in his dungeon using different abilities to fight him, until Dragon Ace tells him to stop and appreciates his work, saying that he has become stronger, and Yuya says that it was only possible because of their instructions, saying that everyone put so much effort in rebuilding him after he boosted his magic stat, and with the staff of Apollonius that Lamia Ace gave him, he can also use magic. Lamia Ace then tells him that it is cheating for him to own such a high-class weapon at a low level. And Dragon Ace tells him that they need for him to level up quickly, saying that he has Goblin Ace's powers, can see weaknesses, and also has Lamia Ace's rare drop item, and he has gained a fair amount of strength as a hero. Gargoyle Ace then says that he is also good with the sword and the magic swordsman class fits him as a hero as it offers a nice combination, superior sword skill and powerful magic spells. And Lamia Ace says that these skills are what he might need to defeat Njili. Suddenly, Chimera Ace appears and says that he will not give his rare drop to anyone who cannot defeat him, telling Yuya that he isn't capable of that, Yuya asks him to let him try. Lamia Ace tries to tell Yuya that Chimera Ace is a very powerful enemy, and he says that he knows that Chimera Ace is as strong as his pride, but he wants to see if he really is the great hero or not, saying that he too wants to be that strong and proud. Yuya then engages in a fight with Chimera Ace, and Lamia warns Chimera Ace that killing is not allowed as they cannot risk Yuya's reincarnation, and Chimera Ace says he will then tear apart his limbs and throw him in his dungeon, telling Lamia to shut up, and says that he will defeat the great hero and Angelia. Yuya then says that he is willing to do anything to help Lucille and the rest of her comrades, and challenges Chimera Ace for a fight, making him furious. Chimera Ace attacks Yuya, but he uses his ability to slow down time, and cuts off his cobra tail. Lamia admires the growth in Yuya's strength and battle senses. Yuya then asks Chimera Ace if he can grow back his tail, and he tells him to stick the severed one back on, and Golem Ace says that the battle has been concluded. Yuya gets Chimera Ace's rare drop item, thinking what a set of reins would help him with. Tanami then comes to his room and tells him about her day out at the pool. Angelia then contacts Yuya and Konami through a party chat and asks him to meet her. He decides to hear what she wants to say, but Lamia and Lucille tell him that it might be a trap, asking him to let them come along, 
and he agrees. The sea and Julia standing in a street, staring at the moon, and she tells Yuya and his friends that by the next new moon, if she fails to reincarnate the great hero, she will disappear, but not return to Fatuli, as it will mark the end of her life. Yuya walks into Konami's house while she is taking a bath. As she comes out to make breakfast for herself and Yuya, she finds Yuya making it already and yells at him to stop acting so casually. Later, the two walk to school and Konami angrily asks him why just enters and goes right inside, and he says that he likes to try any doors that seem open able. They run into Seno and Kacho on the way, and Kacho teases them by saying that they are arguing so early in the morning. The group reaches school and Yuya notices that Angelia's seat is empty, and he thinks about her as the princess who appeared out of nowhere to reincarnate him and send him to Fachalia as the greatest of heroes. But for that he has to die, and she has been constantly trying to kill him, but she is also in danger herself. Suddenly, Kacho appears and asks him if having the great hero's soul makes him feel and care about other people more than himself, which is why he cares even about the princess who is after his life, and Seno says that it is his greatest trait as a hero. Konami then asks Kacho if she is on Yuya's side or not, and she doesn't give a clear answer, saying that a ninja and a sage cannot be taken down that easily, and Seno says that there is nothing to worry about as they are not enemies. Later during gym class, Yuya participates in a race with the other boys and his heroic skills help him dash through and win, leaving the rest of the students shocked, and they ask him what is up with his speed and compliment him. He realizes that he has to go a little easy around other people. He then manages to make a perfect long jump, and everyone admires him. Lucille then comes to take the gym class and asks her teacher what they are doing, and he guides her to first finish the long jump before going for the sprints. Yuya spots Lucille and tells her that she looks cute in gym clothes too and she yells at him to forget about that and instead focus on not using his full force and they have been training, and he apologizes. The conversation is overheard by other students and they think that Yuya has gained his strength by training with Lucille, and they ask her to train them as well. Meanwhile, Kacho enjoys the moment, saying that the demon princess never fails to entertain, while Konami is worried about Yuya and asks if he will ever be a normal student again. But Seno tells her that he will be fine, and Kacho says that Harpy Ace is going to rewrite everyone's memory about Yuya. Harpy Ace uses her skill called Panic Voice, and all the other students start fainting, and Yu asks Lucille if this is a song. Lucille tells him that it is Harpy Ace's skill called Panic Voice, feeling relieved after hearing it, and tells Yu that when all the normal people will wake up, they will be confused into thinking that all this was a dream. She then tells Yu that he is the great hero and has no point for worrying about Angelia, telling him that she is serious about the reincarnation and is gathering more force to get him killed. After school, Yuya and Konami are walking home with Lucille when Yuya asks her why she was late to school, and she tells him that as his hero level increased, she figured that he would be able to equip higher level magic items now, and hands him a ring that will help detect dangers. It is the Ring of Malachite, which is a magical ring that dates back to the Age of Divinity, and the green stone in it helps in boosting the wearer's ability to sense any type of danger. Yuya wears the ring and finds it very cool. Suddenly, a ray of light falls on the stone and it begins to glow, and Lucille tells Yuya that the ring is detecting something. Just then, a truck appears, racing towards them, and Yuya takes Konami in his arms. Angelia then tells Yuya that it is time for him to be reincarnated, but is stopped by him, and he turns on his battle mode, which Angelia finds very attractive. However, she says that she cannot let him level up anymore, but Yuya says that he has still not made up his mind about her, and so he cannot die yet. He uses his ability called Flame Arrow and the truck sets on fire, and Angelia comes out, praising Yuya's skills. She then faces Yuya, saying that she cannot kill him with a truck now, and he says that he will not die and will also not let her die as well, but she says that she will devote everything to have him killed. The two then face each other for a battle. Yuya and Angelina dump their battle and decide to go out on a date instead, saying that they will finish the fight some other day, which annoys Lushul and Konami. The two leave for a date after school and Angelia holds Yuya's arm, saying that she never got a chance to sit down and talk to him and tells him that she has been waiting to date him in this world for a while. She then tells him that she wants to go somewhere before starting their date, and he says that he has no problem with it. Meanwhile, Lucille and Konami disguise themselves and follow Yuya and Angelia to keep an eye on them, and Lucille is furious that Yuya is treating Angelia so naturally despite knowing that his life is in danger with her. Angelia goes to a store with Yuya and tries on an outfit and asks him how it looks, and he says that everything suits her, which makes her really happy. After that, Yuya and Angelia eat crepes, and Angelia tries it for the first time and finds it very delightful. He then asks her if they have crepes on Fachalia, and she says that they have been at war for so long that sweets like these are premium goods, and Yuya says that he has never been on a war, thinking how hard it must be, and Angelia tells him that many of the knights she became friends with will never be returning home and war is a very hard thing. 
Yua asks her why she is still always smiling, saying that she saw her smiling even when she was trying to kill him and this has made him worried about her, and tells her that he wants to talk more honestly with her no matter how dark the things are, which moves Angelia. They later see a Ferris wheel and Yua takes her on it, while Lucille and Konami follow them. Yua helps Angelia sit in the Ferris wheel with him, and she says that he has invited her alone in a place, as if he is inviting her to kill him. But he says that he doesn't mean that, and he likes the view from the top, and Angelia looks at the city from the top. He then tells her that his world is not some conflict-free paradise, but he likes living there, telling her that he has his mom, classmates, and Konami. And now he also has her, Lucille, and the demons, and he would have never met all these people in some other world. She then says that he is truly a great hero, and she has lost all the desire to murder him for the day. She says that she knows that she is a bad woman and is using her problems to win his affection, and is trying to kill him, but he is still accepting her despite everything. He then asks her if she remembers when he told her that he wants to help her, and says that he will not die and will also find a safe way out for her and will find a happy ending to this tale, and she embraces him. Later, the two are on their way back, and Angelia thanks Yua for his time, and he thanks her back. She then tells him that she will get back on her mission to kill him with all her power, saying that she hopes he'll be ready by the time they meet again, and he says that he will not be ready to die, but will happily help her. Later, Lucille goes to talk to Yuya in his room, and Yuya says that the casual outfit she wore earlier really suited her. The two then go for a walk and Lucille asks him what he and Angelia spoke about, and he tells her that they talked about the pains of war, and she says that war is fate for demons and humans. However, Yuya says that demons can get along with humans too, and he is the living proof for Ur, as he is the great hero, who is the ultimate enemy of the demons, but everyone is still so kind to him. The two then decide to head home, and suddenly, Yuya is attacked, but he hides it from Lucille. Meanwhile, Seno is spying on them and she calls Kacho, who tells her to keep an eye on Yuya, the princess, and Lucille. Yuya is worried that Angelia did not come to school. When he is startled by Harpy Ace and Orc Ace when Harpy Ace tells him that she cannot sense the princess's presence anywhere. He then asks Harpy Ace who the other girl is, and she introduces herself as Orc Ace, and he realizes that she doesn't look like what he imagined the Orc Ace to look like, and he tells her that she surprised her with her hotness. Orc Ace then pushes him away, and blushes. Just then, Yoshino appears with a vase of flowers in her hands, and asks him if the girls are his friends, and he says that they are all good friends before winking at Harpy Ace and Orc Ace. She then wordly asks Yu if he is feeling ill, and he says that he is completely fine, but any boy's heart rate may go up when he is around her, and she tells him to save the flirting for Konami before leaving. Orc Ace then tells Yu that there will be no training for the day, and Harpy tells him that he is fighting the strongest of the monsters, the Dragon Ace, and so he needs to rest and build up his strength. Lucille later teaches Yuya and Konami when Dragon Ace enters the room, transformed in his human form, and says he was thinking of granting the Dragon Tribe's secret sword to Yuya. But Lucille refuses, saying that he cannot do so as the great hero is not leveled up enough to handle the weapon and use it to its full capacity. And even if he was, the weapon would punish his body, but Dragon Ace says that with the sword Yuya might have an even chance against the princess. Dragon Ace then tells Yu that he is aware of his plans to save Angelia as well, but the sword is dangerous and difficult to master, and Yu says that he will still do it, asking Dragon Ace to train him. Dragon Ace then tells him to come to his dungeon once he is ready. Later, Yu feels severe pain in his chest, and he thinks whether he will be alright if he fights Dragon Ace with this pain. He is then startled by Kacho, who sneaks up to him from behind. He then confirms if she is a sage, and she says that she is, and sages are very smart, which is why she can see the issues he is facing. She examines him and then tells Harpy Ace and Orc Ace that she will be borrowing the hero for some time. Orc Ace tries to stop her, but Harpy Ace says that she senses nothing hostile and lets Yua go with Kacho. Orc Ace informs Lucille about Yua going with Kacho, and Slime Ace asks Lucille how they should keep the hero guarded, but Harpy Ace says that they are fine for the time being. <laughs> The overpowering storm of the princess's presence has disappeared from the town, which means that she is somewhere too far to be detected. However, Lucille suggests that the princess is planning a large-scale war against them as she has very less time left for reincarnation the hero, and orders her comrades to assemble everyone and prepare for war. Meanwhile, Yuya is at Kacho's apartment and finds it very fancy. Kacho then gets on top of him to check the pain in his chest and tells him that the magic inside his body is near to go haywire, as humans are not ready to handle this kind of magic, and the magic has started piercing in his body. She then tells him that she will perform a procedure to help him, and also says that he will be fine as long as he doesn't overburden himself with magic, but he says that he cannot control that as he needs more power. Kacho advises him that all the training in the world will not make him strong enough to defeat Angelia, 
She then tells him that the procedure she mentioned earlier is more than just band-aids, and if he pushes himself too much the magic will go deeper in his body and he will die. She then takes his hands and licks his finger, equipping the sage ring on his finger, which will help in boosting and stabilizing his magic temporarily. Yuya then thanks Kacho for her help and decides to head back home. She wishes him luck and tells him to stay safe from the love of the princess. Yuya later goes to Dragon Ace for training, and he transforms into a killer. Dragon Ace and Yuya engage in a fearsome fight, and Dragon Ace growls, telling him to see the force of the mightiest demons of the dragon tribe, turning into its true form, and Yuya swears to overcome him. Meanwhile, Angelia walks into a bar and asks for a non-alcoholic cocktail. But the bartender tells her that the place is not for kids like her and she tells him that she is a paying customer. Just then, the weird drunk men in the bar come to her, but she uses her abilities to electrocute them, saying that she is not here to deal with underlings like them. The men try to attack her and pull out their pistols, but dodges all the bullets using her royal sword. However, the men don't give up and decide to fight harder with her, but she says that she doesn't like to fight with people like them, and uses an ability called Sleep Cloud to make them all pass out instantly. However, she hears footsteps and finds out that one of the men is not affected by the sleep cloud, and she realizes that the man is the merchant of death who is running the wars on this world. He comes up to Angelia and asks her if the men are permanently sleeping or will they wake up. She says that they will be right up before clapping her hands and the men wake up. She later offers the merchant of death a deal, saying that she wants experienced mercenaries and the latest in military arms, and he asks her what he will get in return, saying that one can buy a whole nation with the cost of everything she wants. Angelia then snaps her fingers and treasury starts to appear around her, falling to the ground, and the merchant and bartender watch in shock. She then says that she has all the gold and silver they want along with other things that are unimaginable to the world. Merchant of Death is impressed by her devotion and her eyes filled with strength, and asks her who are their enemies, and she tells him that she wants him to slay some monsters for her. Yua and Dragon Ace continue to fight. Dragon Ace releases his blazing flames on him, and Yua decides to cast Wait Battle Spell, and Dragon Ace tells him that his move was nice, but he will need much more than that to defeat him, and Yua realizes that he already read his moves. Yua is attacked by him and falls down, realizing that he is too strong and he cannot deal with him. He then remembers the weapon Dragon Ace told him about earlier, called the Dragon Slayer. He told him that the Dragon Slayer is the legendary sword that was used to defeat the Divine Dragon of old. It would be enough to defeat Anjili, but will only be granted to a true warrior. And if he fails to defeat Dragon Ace and tries to simply picking it up, he will be doomed. He then decides to fight again, determined to save Angelia by beating death and saving the entire demon realm. He then attacks Dragon Ace with all his might, thinking that he has defeated him, only to get his own arm severed in the process. He then sits down to take a break, crying, thinking that he started to take things lightly because all the other demons were too easy on him. But Dragon Ace is training him to his limits. After thinking for some time and remembering that Angelia is relying on him, Yuya stands back up and tells Dragon Ace that many people are counting on him not dying, and he will not let that happen, charging at Dragon Ace. Meanwhile, Lucio rushes with Lamia to Skeleton, Ace's dungeon, asking Lamia how long Konami has been in there, and Lamia tells her that it has been almost 8 hours, which means 3 days have passed in the dungeon. Lucille stands outside the gates of the dungeon, wondering why Konami is not coming out. The two then enter the dungeon and find Konami sitting on a throne, transformed into the Dark Priest, while Skeleton Ace and his undead bow in front of her. Skeleton Ace then says that finally someone worthy of ruling over the undead has appeared, and calls Konami the savior of death and souls. All the undead and Skeleton Ace submit to Konami, leaving Lucille and Lamia Ace shocked, and Lucille wonders how Konami leveled up so much to become the Great Dark Priest in such a short time. Konami then comes to Lucille and tells her that she wants to speak to her in private before ordering the undead to follow Skeleton Ace's lead and prepare for battle, while Lucille tells the spirits in the dungeons to let her borrow their leader. Meanwhile, a gorilla base is attacked by Angelia and the Grancher Royal Knight. The Royal Knight uses his axe to attack soldiers, and a single swing of the weapon sends the target straight to heaven, while Angelia uses her protection abilities to defy the bullets, later telling the knight that everything he is wearing is a product of first-class magic from Thatchelia. The Merchant of Death then tells Angelia that when she put the armor on him first, he thought it was some kind of cosplay, and Angelia says that he cannot trust a weapon until he has tried it out as he himself is a weapons merchant. However, the other soldiers spot them and Angelia decides to use one of the tanks to attack them while taking the rest of the large scale away. She then orders her army to take out the soldiers in the base before they attack the demons. Meanwhile, everyone at the manor has a party and Minotaur Ace tells everyone to have some first-class beef he brought for the party. The group enjoys Minotaur Ace's barbecue, and Cyclops A.E. teases him by asking if the meat is his own meat, 
and he says that his meat tastes better than Greta meat. And Slime Ace says that they should take their time as this meal might be their last meal together. And Minotaur Ace says that he will fend off all the enemies with his labyrinth. And Lamia Ace says that his Daedalus's labyrinth is a very complex maze. Lucille later goes to check on Hera Ace and asks her if she is okay as all the others are enjoying the party. And Harpy tells her that Yua is still fighting with Dragon Ace. And when the princess comes then Yua will not emerge unscathed. And Lucille says that since the princess has still not showed up, she must be preparing hard for battle against them. But the traps they have laid around their countless dungeons will beat her very easily. Harpy Ace then asks Lumiel if she is in love with the hero. And she freaks out, and explains that she can never love someone who is her mortal enemy no matter how friendly they are. Lucille then asks Harpy Ace about it, and she says that she finds you a very nice, and she was happy to see that he counts all of them as his friends. Lucille tells her that she has no problem with having the hero around, but if she is asked if she hates or loves him, she will say that she doesn't hate him. While Harpy says that Harpies can get quiet passionate on nights like these, and she might have asked Yua to mate with her if he was not fighting in the dungeon. Angelia leads her army through the forest and reaches the house of the demons and is happy that she found the demon base. Thinking that she has a team of 20 royal knight class who are outfitted in anti-monster equipment, along with a group of 50 soldiers well trained in handling of human weapons. And now all the equipment and personnel are here with her, saying that the day is the day when the great hero will be provided with death. Angelia attacks Lucille's manor with her army of white knights and breaks in through the gates. As they enter, Angelia sees the first of the dungeons and realizes that only ace-level monsters can build a dungeon like it, and tells her comrades that the dungeon they are entering is Minotaur Ace's maze called Daedalus's Labyrinth, but she says that it is not a problem. Suddenly, a huge rolling stone comes towards them, and one of the knights crushes it with a single strike with the help of the armor and weapons that Angelia gave them. Meanwhile, Lucille watches the enemies break into her base from the window, and asks Lamia Ace where the hero is, and she tells him that she felt a huge magical force coming from Dragon Ace's dungeon and it has been quiet ever since, with no signs of battle, and suggests that Lucille goes to check on it, but she says that she is the Demon Lord's daughter and cannot leave the battle because of her personal reason, and says that she is counting on the hero, hoping that he gets stronger and chooses the best path forward. Lamia then says that she will also believe in the hero Lucille trusts. Kacho walks up to Konami sitting alone on a swing, and she bursts into tears, asking Kacho to help her as a lot of things are going on, and Kacho calms her down by hugging her and patting her head. She later tells Kacho that she became the Dark Priestess because she wanted to help Yue, and she asked Lucille to teach her too as Yue is training so hard, but when she went to Skeleton Ace's dungeon for training, he made her sign a contract, saying that her only task is to sign it as he has decides to elect her as his master and make her a dark priestess who is worthy of leading all the undead. She then asks him if she will be able to help Yua by doing so, and he says that it depends on her as he will help her increase her level. She then agrees to sign the contract and Skeleton Ace comes to her with all of the undead, and they submit to an elect here as their master. She also tells Kacho that Skeleton Ace made her enter the tomb after covering her in band-aids like a mummy telling her that the tomb is infused with power of the dark priests of history, and she will learn how to use the force inside the tomb. And if she wore regular clothing which was not infused with magical powers, she would wither away. She then lays inside the tomb, finding it softer and comfier than she thought. And he tells her to rest well, and tells her that by the time she is woken up she will be reborn as their dark priestess. She tells Kacho that she slept inside the tomb, finding it very comfortable, and saw a dark priestess leading many skeletons and zombies and cast all kinds of magic spells in her dream. And when the tomb was opened again, she saw Skeleton Ace and all of the undead treating her as the dark priestess, and so she acted like the priestess they saw in her so that they don't feel disappointed. Kacho then asks her if she is on a very high level and she agrees, saying that she doesn't know what she should do with all the magic she has, and Kacho asks her what she wants to do with it. Kacho then explains that everyone in the world has their own role that they are supposed to fulfill, and asks her why Yu is training hard, and Konami realizes that he is doing it because he wants to stay alive and also keep Angelia alive, and he would have done the same even if he wasn't a hero. She then realizes that she has to follow her own heart, and it has nothing to do with being the Dark Priestess or leading an undead army. She then happily tells Kacho that she understands everything now, and invites her to join her in doing what her heart desires. Kacho tells her that she is a sage and cannot get involved much, but Konami says that she only wants her by her side as she is her friend. Kacho then agrees, thinking why she always stays preoccupied with the sage stuff, and the two set off to do whatever their hearts desire. Angelia and her army make their way through the labyrinth, and her comrades tell her that they can still see the remains of people who fought here before them. They also notice that the monsters attacking them vanish after they beat them. 
and Angelia tells them that most of the creatures in the dungeons are virtual creatures created from magic, called the minions. Just then, the troops that she had sent ahead are attacked and killed, and Angelia realizes that there is a boss-class monster ahead. Suddenly, they hear a loud growl and Minotaur Ace appears and attacks many of Angelia's soldiers, and she decides to take on the Ace-level monster herself. Meanwhile, Lucille's watching the fight, and she asks Lamia Ace how long will Minotaur Ace be able to hold back Angelia, and tells her that it is possible for around 10 minutes or so, and Lumiel sighs before ordering to move as planned. Lamia then asks her if she is worried about their missing hero, and she says that she is as the training is taking far too long. Just then, Konami comes to them and tells Lucille to not worry, telling her that her party system list shows that Yua is still alive, but his HP is 1, which means he is seriously hurt, and Lucille becomes even more worried. Konami notices that Lucille is really concerned about Yuya and prays that he returns soon. Angelia defeats Minotaur Ace, saying that no matter how strong he may be, he cannot defeat the princess. Her soldiers ask her if they should leave Minotaur Ace alive, and she tells them to not kill him as she is in a party with the hero and cannot afford to boost his levels more. She then notices that the great hero is near death, and thinks that the demons are hiding him away somewhere while he is on the edge of dying. Just then, Chimera Ace appears and tells the princess that it is their first meeting. Suddenly, a portal is created under her which takes her away from her army, and she realizes that they were trapped. Meanwhile, Slime Ace tells Chimera Ace that he hasn't eaten an Elite Knight armor in a long time, and Chimera Ace tells him to eat it before he burns everything down. The two then take on the troops of Angelia and her knights. Angelia finds herself in an unknown place, and thinks that she has been transported into another monster's dungeon. Her system also comes to a halt and she realizes that it is a high-level dungeon since her system gets prohibited. Just then, the walls of the dungeon start to melt, turning into liquid, and she realizes that she is in the dungeon of Slime Ace. The slime causes her armor to break, and she freaks out as the slime begins to melt away her royal clothes, and she can also not detect magic if her system is offline. She then talks to herself, and tells herself that she has gained experience and skill, and there is no room from which she cannot get out, and she simply needs to find where the slime is ejecting out from. All of her clothes are melted down by the slime, but she is determined to get out. She swims through the slime and finds a little crack in the floor, and finds the exit. She takes out her royal sword and breaks the floor, which makes all the slime drain out while she hangs herself up with the shadow wire. She then gets back down when all the slime gets flushed out, and she is glad that she learned some ranger class skills. She later finds herself in Lamia Ace's dungeon, and she uses her system to drape herself in the Lord's garb which is one of her three sacred treasures, and she remembers that the armor is suitable for physical attacks. She then hears some footsteps and finds Lamia Ace, Harpy Ace, and Orc Ace standing in the distance, and asks them if they thought that they could beat her together. But Lamia Ace refuses, saying that she is among the strongest people in Fachalia, and they have brought their best strengths. Just then, Lumiel appears, and tells Angelia that she has been waiting, saying that she will be taking advantage of her limited time. But Angelia says that she will use all the magic power she has against them, Lumiel then orders her comrades to charge, while she takes on Angelia directly, and they engage in a brutal fight. Lumiel's battle with Angelia intensifies and Orc Ace joins to assist Lumiel, attacking Angelia, while Harpy Ace tries to sneak up from behind and attack, but Angelia senses it and swings her royal sword, wounding Orc Ace. However, Orc Ace uses her ability to heal herself. Harpy Ace then uses her wing flap ability, but all the attacks are resisted by Angelia. Just then, Lami uses her weakening magic and traps Angelia, saying that they know she has no resistance to weakening magic in her current state. But Angelia says that she has a princess passive skill, which she can use to recover from weakening spells in an instant. But Lumiel charges at her, saying that Angelia will go down for her. Lumiel attacks her with her sword, and Angelia moves her arm in front of her for defense. And Lumiel later realizes that she used her arm deliberately, and Angelia says that she has a skill that activates when she is under attack. However, she cannot use her right arm until it is healed. Later, Lumiel asks if she still refuses to retreat, and Angelia says that she is only here to kill and reincarnate the hero. Harpy Ace then tells her that Yuya only wants a quiet life, and he is so kind to all the monsters and everyone around him, and even to Angelia herself, despite her constant attempts to murder him. But Angelia says that she knows it, and has no other way out. Harpy Ace then says that she doesn't want Yuya to die and lose himself. Lumil then tells Angelia that Yuya showed them the way in which they can be monsters and yet be friends and kind to each other, and he can be a hero and also kindest to all the demons, and he believed in them, and is also risking his life now for training. Lucille asks Angelia if there can be a day when the demons and humans finally get along, 
and she says that they may see such a day. But she is the princess and a leader of mankind, and was born to fulfill the duty of reincarnating the great hero. And she asks if it is the same thing from Lumiel, as she has the same attributes in the Demon Lord's kingdom. The two girls then face each other, ready to fight. Angelia then thinks about her unhealed arm, while Lumiel says that she has a clear chance to win and beat Angelia. The two girls engage in a fierce battle, while Harpy Ace and Lamia Ace keep on assisting Lumiel. Harpy uses her panic voice ability to distract Angelia, but Angelia says that she can resist and cancel out the attacks. However, Lumiel says she won't miss the chance to defeat her and swings her sword at Angelia, and Angelia realizes that Lumiel is aiming for her vital spot. Lumiel pierces Angelia's right shoulder, but Angelia also uses a target skill to hit Lumiel, and she is wounded. She then admires Angelia's skill, telling her that she is a great princess as she used a suicide move reliant on power-ups and regeneration. Just then, Lamia Ace uses her magic to cast a high ancient spell, and a number of meteors fall from the sky into the dungeon. Angelia then uses her ability called Flare Blast to destroy the spell, while Lumiel, Harpy Ace, and Lamia Ace charge at her once. But Angelia uses the tank she kept in her item storage to attack her foes, and the tank fires Harpy Ace first, followed by Orc Ace. Angelia then charges at Lumiel with her sword, ready to kill her, when suddenly, Yu appears and holds the tip of Angelia's sword. Angelia looks at Yuya and realizes that he has completely transformed into another person. Lumiel is glad to see Yuya, and asks him if he is alright, and he says that he defeated Dragon Ace somehow. A flashback reveals that he used his ability called Wait Battle to slow down time and think of something that may help him defeat the monster, and after thinking he realizes that he can use his system from Fachalia to and sees Dragon Ace's stats as well, realizing that everyone in Fachalia is bound to a system. He then sees what drop items he has and analyzes their stats. Finally finding a way to defeat Dragon Ace, he then takes out his sword and launches himself at Dragon Ace. He strikes him with his sword, but it breaks. He then uses his detection ability to see the weak point of Dragon Ace and launches an attack at it. Dragon Ace then asks him if he deliberately attacked his armored leg, and that his ability shows him to detect other people's weaknesses. Yuya then charges at Dragon Ace, telling him that he will show him his true courage and the courage of a hero. But Dragon Ace warns him, saying that he knows where he is aiming, and no wise hero would directly plunge towards their target. Dragon Ace uses his power called King Dragon Breath, and Yuya uses the Flame Arrow. Just after deploying the arrow to propel himself, Yuya launches himself at Dragon Ace and pierces Dragon Ace's skin. Dragon Ace begins to growl in pain as the Flame Arrow bursts on him, and Yuya falls to the ground in the distance. Dragon Ace then turns back to his smaller form and appreciates Yuya for his incredible skills, telling him to imagine actually defeating a dragon while he is at his level. Dragon Ace thinks he is about to die, but Yuya says he will not let him die, and pulls out the golden reins given to him by Chimera Ace. Dragon Ace asks him if the reins are a drop item from Chimera Ace, and he agrees, saying that he will use these on him to make him his, as the golden reins have the power to tame any monster. He then asks Dragon Ace if he wants to join him and save Angelina. And he laughs, saying that his life, his soul, and his existence now belongs to him. Yuya then asks him to fix his arm, saying that it hurts a lot and he feels like he will die. And Dragon Ace says that as his servant creature, the task is very simple. He then performs a special class change for Yuya, telling him that he will remain a hero but will be deeply connected to a king dragon, and he will be called the Dragon Hero. He then also earns the secret sword called Dragon Slayer, while his arm is reincarnated, and he rushes to save his friends. He tells Angelia that Dragon Ace is now infused in his equipment, leaving her shocked. She also recognizes the sword, and Lumiel says that it is the legendary Dragon Slayer. Angelia is still unable to understand what made Yuya so intimidating, as only defeating Dragon Ace would not have done so, and wonders what happened to him. He then goes closer to Angelia and apologizes for being so late, telling her that he knows a lot more now. Just then, Konami and Kacho appear, and everyone is happy to see them. Konami then tells Lucille to leave Harpy Ace's healing to her and takes her in her arms. She then uses the Dark Resurrection magic to resurrect her, and Harpy Ace comes back to life. They all then face Angelia, and Yuya tells her that she looks flattering in her outfit, and Angelia blushes with a smile on her face. Yuya then says that she looks cute all over, but the bottom of the dress is provocative. Harpy Ace then tells everyone that Slime Ace melted Angelia's clothes away. And Orcase asks if he wants her to strip as well, and he agrees. Lucille then gets furious and tells them to stop, and Konami says to her that Yuya cannot be fixed now. Yuya then tells Angelia that he will be beating, earning, and saving her, and Angelia says that as a princess it's her job to be rescued, and the two then charge at each other, saying that it is the last battle. Angelia and Yuya charge at each other, and Angelia uses her triple strike skill, but Yuya manages to dodge her attack, and Lucille is shocked that he managed to cancel her skill. 
Angelia then uses her magical abilities to attack him. But he cancels her spell and holds her hand. Meanwhile, Konami asks Kacho if a skill and spell cancel ability exists. But Kacho tells her that nothing can let anyone have both abilities at the same time. And this is just Yura showing Angelia that he will not let her use any of the Fatulia abilities. She then explains that after he attained Dragon Ace's powers, his strengths have been supercharged along with his durability and magical defense. And these are the capabilities that Yu obtained based on his own training. While his hero's eyes detect skills and magic before they are even used, which lets him use weight battle to act first and top them. Angelia then pushes him away, and says that she will now use assassin skills without any casting or prep involved. She attacks him with a shadow dagger, but he manages to grab it using his ability called Dragon's Grab, which is a special ability that only the ones approved by the King Dragon can use. And Lucille says that he is really the great hero as no skills, magic spells, or speed-oriented attacks damage him. Angelia is left helpless after all of her attacks don't work, and Yuya takes the Maya crown off her head. She then charges at him with her royal sword, saying that a skill called Royal Slash killed a hero before, but she fails again. She then thinks how amazing the great hero is, and there is no way she can ever engage him. Angelia then remembers how she created her strength out of her memories of being separated from the past hero in a past life, hoping that she could see him one more time and remembers how she bathed with Yuya, slept with him, joined his party, and went out on a date with him, and her life has been so satisfying as a woman. And even if she wasn't able to reincarnate him for her homeland Fatulia, whatever happened has made her very happy. Just then, she is about to collapse and fall to the ground when Yuya takes her in his arms, and she asks him if he would save Fatulia for her or not. He then asks her what she thinks he made himself so strong for. And she says he did it so he could survive when she was trying to kill him, and he refuses, saying that if this was the only reason, he would have had the monsters hide him away. He then tells her that he doesn't know how strong the great heroes of legend were, but he figured out that if was stronger, he could help a little, saying that he wants to help her and her nation without dying or reincarnating. Also making himself clear that he is not here to kill Lucille's father, the demon lord, either. Lucille says that she doubts he would go down that easily and asks him if he will try to negotiate with him, and he says that he has to rescue humanity and the monsters. As being a hero it is his job to save both worlds, and Angelia thinks that she should have said this to him right in the beginning. Yua then asks Angelia what she wants him to do, and she asks him if he would save Fatulia, and he takes her hand, saying that it is a hero's duty to save. Suddenly, Kacho bursts out laughing, and Lumiel says that they have been fighting for this long because it doesn't work like that. Yua then embraces Angelia. And Konami is happy to see them like this, but Lumil doesn't like it. Meanwhile, Kacho gets a call from Seno, and wonders what it could be. Lamia Ace then tells Lucille that the battle with the humans appears to have ended, and Lucille is happy that no deaths took place, and decides to go out and declare victory, when suddenly, Seno tells Kacho to run away. Just then, a huge magical device appears in the sky, and Angelia tells Yuya that it is the final device that is designed to kill her and take him with her, saying that it is Fatulia's system itself. Everyone stares at the huge device coming towards them, and Angelia says that fighting the system is like taking on all of Fatulia at once. The system then goes on debug mode, and Angelia says that only the Jewel of Royalty has the right to change anything possible in the world, and if it kills and reincarnates the hero they all will be safe, but the device can also destroy the world. Lucille then asks you what they will do, and tells everyone to defeat the machine with him and make a happy ending, saying that this is the real last battle. The legend says that once the world was ruled by two advanced civilizations called Mu and Atlantis, while the kingdom of Mu pursued the very limits of human abilities, Atlantis chose to evolve monsters to surpass humanity, and the two sides waged war, being incompatible with each other. In the end, both the civilizations were blown into another world, which transformed into Fatulia. While the kingdoms were at war, they built a system that digitized and managed all the things that made up the world, and mankind grew dependent on the system over time. After a long time, the original technology behind the system vanished into ancient history, and the world grew stagnant, relying on the system and magical powers. Yu and his friends attack the robot altogether, while Konami says that she will protect all of her friends. Chimera Ace, Harpy Ace, and Orcase also charge at the device, attacking it with all their might. Angelia then decides to attack it through its gaps, while Skeleton Ace orders his undead family to build a base for their master, while Lamia Ace summons the meteors again. However, the robot is so powerful that it resists all the attacks instead. Angelia and Lucille then decide to work together and attack it, but nothing seems to work on the system. Meanwhile, Kacho decides to take the system down and settle everything, as she is the last sage who built the system, and Seno asks Kacho to let her accompany her as the last ninja. She takes Kacho in her arms and leaps onto the system. Meanwhile, Angelia tells Yuya to keep doing what the system doesn't expect, 
and he says that the demon princess and the human princess fighting together was unexpected, realizing that they have to keep exploiting the bugs in the system. Angelia then calls on his white knights, saying that she has a job for the ones who can still move. Lucille orders all the forces to attack, and Angelia says that the system would not expect the humans of this world wearing royal gear and attacking alongside the monsters. All the monsters climb onto the system along with the knights, while Angelia and Lucille work together. Konami then tells Yuya that the world is becoming like he wanted it to be, and he says that it is always best when they get along with each other. He then goes and whispers something in Angelia's ear, and she agrees with him, while Lucille is curious what he is planning, later realizing that it is definitely something they could never think of. Yuya then gets on top of the truck that Angelia used to attempt his killing, and he says to the system that he must have never expected that the hero will attack him with the truck that was used to kill him. As the truck hits the system, it causes a huge blast, and the system crashes after facing multiple errors. Yuya later collapses from using a lot of magic. He then apologizes to Kacho for breaking his promise about using a lot of magic. Konami sobs, asking him if he is going to be reincarnated, but Seno says that if the system is destroyed then he will not be reincarnated, which means he'll die. Angelia then asks Kacho about the instructions that were passed down by her family about what should be done if the system is destroyed, and tells her to put the world back to the time before Yuya awoke to magic. But Kacho tells her that it will mean that they never met Yuya. But Angelia says that he did his job and saved the princess, while Lumil says that he taught her many things too, and they have to pay him back. They all then access the backup log and put the world back to how it was before. Yuya later wakes up in his room, and thinks that he had a crazy dream about him being a hero on an adventure with a bunch of crazy girls. He is then called by Konami for breakfast and he says that he will be right down. Just then, a magical portal appears in his room and a beautiful girl with pigtails emerges. She suddenly embraces Yuya, calling him her big brother, and tells her that she has come to protect him from their evil father, the Dark Knight. Just then, the Dark Knight appears out of nowhere and tells Yuya that he now has to come and destroy Fachalia with him. His sister Yumi then tells him that after his father died, he was reincarnated as the Dark Knight and married an elven princess, after which she was born. Moments later, Anglia and Lucille appear, and tell him that they will protect him and will not let him die, and he realizes that what he thought was a dream was actually real, and he tells his father that he has already said goodbye to reincarnation. 